Hi guys, Paul here, Radio Sharp. Thanks for joining me in this. Uh, we're on the road again, so this is the Radio Sharp review meets Richard May Ray Guitars part two. And if I can just pan around a little bit, I can see that we're once again up here in his workshop in Abergavenny. Um, I've come to see, well, a while ago, I started, ask, well, I asked for a guitar to be made by Richard. He's making me a Rossilli, which is an OM guitar, so much like a Martin OM, but it's obviously an all handmade guitar. And I've come up to see what the progress is because I think we're about two months in and I've been sent some photos, but I'm really excited to see where we are with that. Um, so in a minute, you're going to see a bit of footage. Richard is going to tell us where he is with the build. And yeah, so just enjoy. Um, obviously, in this radio shop review, we're not in the, in the workshop, but been a lot happening. Obviously, we had a lovely Christmas. Hope you guys enjoyed too. And we've got a few things coming up, a bit of news coming up soon. But also, I mean, the main thing, there's some pictures coming across the screen of sort of things that we're adding. We're quite slow actually because we're so busy making pickups. We're quite slow usually with updating the website. But there's going to be a lot of new things coming soon, and they're actually really available now to order. So if you fancy the look of anything, and here's some images now of some of the stuff we've got. We've got some sort of raw nickel covered paths and P90s. We've got Filtertrons for the first time. They are actually on the website. And we've got, I think it's created a bit of a stir, which is like the uh, path shaped P90s. So we call them the path 90s. So they seem to be quite popular as well. So there's a few things being added and lots more news coming soon. So there'll be a proper reader shop review soon. But uh, we're going to go over now with, to Richard and see where he is with my build, and I can't wait to see it. Well, I'm here with Richard, and I just want to ask you, really, um, where are we are with the build. So sh show me what we're up to, and like what's coming next, and we're going to see yeah. a little bit happen as well. Get some, get some bits. So, so this is your back with your uh, centre strip that you wanted. Yes, That's all inlaid. Yeah. Um, the braces are on, but they're not finely shaped. Right. Um, and you can see if you look across, the, the back has that. Curving. Yeah, I was gonna. That is a question I'm gonna ask you another time. What I was gonna mention as well, guys, is I'm gonna be up here again. If you've got any questions for Richard on, like, how do you do a certain aspect of guitar making, Alex done it, um, then put them in the comment section below and I'll ask Richard next time. Um, my question is I'm just getting distracted, but look, I don't know if you can come in a bit. This, this part of the green here, that's absolutely stunning. Now, you've told me that you are sorry I'm interrupting what you were going to tell me, but yeah. how do you get this to be curved? I've got a theory, I was telling Dan last night, and I, I think it might be right. Yeah, yeah, you're looking in the right place. Yeah, you, this is a radius <coughs> dish, I believe, yeah? <coughs> yeah. Do, so you, do you kind of sand the braces in that? I don't sand the braces. Right, I, I, I um, have a jig where I wrap them to the almost the final shape and then I plane it by hand just to get it right. perfect. Okay. Um, but they are curved to the same curvature as this dish. It looks like it's flat, but it's, yeah. it's actually concave. Oh, so radius. We the, about, this you think is, about radius of a fingerboard, mm -hmm. something like 12 inches, really yeah. a circle that's what 12 inches, like the that. Of that yeah. That's so, quite round, isn't it, comparatively to... Yeah, the back is uh, done to a 15 foot radius and the top is 28. Wow, so uh, this is a top dish, and that's a 28 foot radius, so it's quite flat. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the, the 15 foot, when you look at it across, there is a bit of a curve in there. If you can see that curve going down there. Um, and when it gets glued to the sides, because the sides have that curve on them that way and that way, mm. um, it sort of gets a bit more pronounced. You sort of bend it that way as well. Right. Um, so okay. that's the back. This is your this is your soundboard. Um, so the rosette is in, and it's all down to the right thickness. Um, it's just under three mil, about two point eight. A little okay. bit less. Look at the side on. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's ready to be cut out now. I'll cut the uh, the sound tone out as well. Yeah, because one, and I was going to ask about this. Here I can see that perhaps the the final shape has not been arrived at, has not quite mm -hmm. been arrived at, because you can see this. This isn't rounded yet. Yep. Yeah, I, I leave everything a little bit oversized, right. and, and then when the back and the front are glued onto the sides, then I trim everything flush to the sides. Just makes yeah. things a bit easier. But I suppose if you were, somebody was like, didn't have this knowledge, and they were just making a guitar, mm. like oh, the first one I've ever made, so mm. you think, oh, I'll, I'll do the final shape. Yeah. 
yeah. this is one of the aspects I don't get is like how much I'll allow you know it's like you've got to allow for things like gluing and curves and uh, things like this it's like yeah it's like a mind flow. I just don't see how I would get the knowledge like to do all this you know? well I mean I went to university to learn it but mostly what I've learned is by doing it yeah yeah um, so if you give yourself a little bit of extra then you can't really go wrong if you get it too small kind of size you can yeah. only go smaller so you it's the old kind of thing you can you can take away but you can't add once you've so it's yeah. much much harder to stick okay yeah and how much are you going to lose from in the centre of here? Uh, that sand hole is four inches in diameter, so 102 mil. This appears to be darker. Mm -hmm. I put a bit, little bit of shellac on there, just okay. as a, a wood sealer to stop the, um, the the wood tearing when I cut the sand hole. Mm. And of course, I don't know if I'm right here, but obviously this like sort of gappy bit here is mm -hmm. because this is all going to be chopped away somewhere. Yeah, yeah, that, that'll be covered by the fretboard. The fretboard yeah. will come down to that there. Mm. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So oh, wow. this is, like I said, the final thickness, and it's got a nice. Can you hear that? Yeah. Right, Wobblability. Good. Yeah, wobblability. And if you hold it up here and give it a tap. I'm picking up C sharp. I it. Enjoy <laughs> it. Yeah, no. But if you hold it up there, and you can, you can sort of hear a nice resonance. Okay. Right. Yeah. Hold it up, up by your ear if you can. That's it. It's a bit like tapping on, like lightly on top of like a German bass drum or something. It, it is like. Yeah. You want to. It's a. It's, uh, it's a little bit uh, stiffer than floppy cardboard. That's what it sounds like. But um, yeah, that's a really nice soundboard you've got there. Come in, if you can come in. Now I was telling. Dan, like that, I've seen a definition of like triple A as being ten grain per square inch. I look at this and it's got like twenty five or something. Everybody's grading uh, varies. Triple A is usually sort of twenty five per square inch. Uh, per per twenty five. Yeah, um, but uh, this one is more. Yeah, because this is a really really nice stuff. So it's grown very slowly in very stable conditions. I can see it actually, uh, um, and this is. I'm careful holding this now because obviously I can feel the kind of. It's not. It's like almost like a little disconcerting to me that there's a bit of a fluffiness to this. Mm, it's very. But that is obviously a good quality. Yeah. I, I I was saying to Adam like you look when this is finished, you can look down there and you can see if there's a straightness to the grain mm -hmm. inside the sand hole. Yeah. Is this a, a sign of a good? Guitar. Um, that is a sign of quarter sawn wood. Okay. It's not necessarily a sign of a good quality top. Yeah. Um, but it's a good place to start. Yeah. If you had a, I had a Martin D seventy D seventy four. No, D twenty eight from nineteen seventy four. It was like more than that diagonal, like that across. You know, in the sound hole, you looked at the sound hole. It wasn't ninety degrees at the top, perpendicular. Yeah. It was like that. Yeah, I What's mean, wrong with that? well, it's not, it's not great, but if the top is stiff, stiff enough, then it's going to hold up well. Um, be, don't you want flopability? Flappability? You, you want it to be stiff for its size. Um, this is very stiff for its size, but because it's so thin, it's just quite floppy. Um, when I get braces on this, it'll be a very stiff top. Um, but if you've got wood which isn't quarter sawn but it's stiff, that's okay. It just doesn't look very good. And it, mm. it's, not, it's not great grading. Whoever yeah, yeah. decided that wood would go on a nice guitar, absolutely shouldn't. Mm. Yeah, right, yeah. Okay. Anything else to show me? Yeah, I've got your, I've got your sides here. Um, so I have shaped. Back. You can see it's tapered, it's thinner at the, um, the neck joint than the butt of the guitar. So it tapers down. Mm. Um, so that will follow the 15 foot curve. And I've put the linings on there and I've got the reinforcing strips. So mm. this is the back? Yes, this is the back. This will be the front. That will be the sound book, which I haven't, I haven't shaped that yet. Mm. But um, wow. yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's almost kind of purplish, isn't it? Mm. 
It is. It's Indian root. I just remember reminding this fact. I forgot. Sitka spruce. <clears throat> what would be the origin of this? Um, that's probably Canada, maybe okay. Alaska. Okay. And this is East Indian, is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why is this purplish? Uh, that is just the, the tree. There's yeah. a really big variety of colours of rosewood. But of course, when finished? When finished, this will go very dark. The purpley stuff tends to go almost black. Yeah, yeah much darker. Amazing. So, yeah, it, it won't look purple. Yeah, when yeah. When it's finished. I think we started this in something like late October when I came in and did wood choice. What, so what's, what are the next steps? And you're going to show us something today, I think, aren't you? Yeah, I'll be cutting out the sand hole and cutting out the shape of the guitar and then sticking a few braces on there as well. Let's get on with that then. Um, right, I'm just, just lost for words. I'm not really taking this in. I think it's because I'm filming it. I'm not really taking the movements to look at this, but I think, I think I'll take some pictures as well. Mm. Looks absolutely stunning. I can't wait to see you work on that. Um, yeah, guys, thanks for watching. I'm gonna, just going to put a bit of footage up now, basically, of Richard just working on a few different aspects of things. Um, if you've got any questions, put them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, just hit subscribe. I head over your website is www.richardmerrickguitars.co.uk. There you go. Or on have to go over there, guys, and you know, have a look at Richard's work because I mean, there's going to be lots of videos of me playing them and things like that. You, you know, you're not going to hear the end of this really if you want if you're a subscriber. But I think you know, it's with good reason, really. This is the work that Richard does here is incredible, and I, I see some of it. Thanks for watching, guys.